This is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at while loops in Kotlin. If you know Java, this is exactly the same as in Java. So you don't need this video if you already know Java. The only thing I'm going to do differently here to Java is I'm going to compare two strings using equals equals, which is correct in Kotlin. But in Java, we would want to use the dot equals method. OK, so we've seen for loops already. For loops are used in a case where you know in advance, usually, how many iterations of the loop you want to perform. We use while loops in the case where we don't know in advance how many times we want to loop. So let's take a look at an example. I'm going to declare a string here. Let's call it command and set it equal to just an empty string. Now I'm going to use the while keyword. After that, we have round brackets and then usually open and close curly brackets. Again, we can just put one line of code after instead of a code block if we want. And in the round brackets, we have a condition and the while loop is going to keep looping as long as the condition is true. Let's write, for example, command is not equal to stop. So this by itself would just keep looping forever because command is not equal to stop. It's just an empty string. And if we just ran this now, it would run with maximum possible speed, maybe even lock up the computer a little bit, although that's usually less of a problem these days than it used to be. We usually want something within the while loop that slows it down a bit somehow. And we want to create some way of this condition changing to false. So let's say command equals read line, read ln. And we'll also put some prompt text up here. Let's write print ln type stop to finish. Now if I run this, so if I hit return, it's just going to keep looping. So it's going to keep printing type stop to finish if I type anything other than stop. But if I type stop, then the loop ends and the program ends. We could maybe put a print line finished here to make that a bit clearer. So this is definitely worth trying out for yourself. If you end up being a professional programmer, this is something you're going to use from time to time, but probably not as much as a for loop. However, in some situations, it's extremely useful. Now, there's a slight variation on the while loop called a do while, which we also find in Java and other programming languages. Let's maybe copy this stuff and create a copy of it down here. And I'm going to just set this command variable back to an empty string. So I can't redeclare command with var. You can't have two variables with the same name in the same scope. But I can change it back to an empty string like this. Now I'm going to have do while. So this starts with a do keyword and it ends with while followed by a condition in round brackets. I'm actually going to use this condition. So I'm going to cut this from there and paste it down here. And let's have finished one here and finished two here. So if we run this in this program, it seems like it does the same thing. Let's run it. So here to get the first loop to stop, I've got to type stop. It says finished one and I have to type stop again to get the second loop to finish. And then it says finished two. Now the key difference is that a do while loop is guaranteed to always execute at least once, whereas a while loop might not execute at all. So if when we go into the while loop, this condition is actually false, then this isn't going to execute even once. Whereas with a do while loop, the condition isn't checked at all until one iteration of the loop has been performed. So this code block will get executed once at least. Then after that, it will check the condition. And of course, the conditions in both cases will get repeatedly checked every time after we've been around a loop. So if you're a complete beginner, this is something really important to just practice a little bit. And if you want an exercise, you could try, for example, using a while loop to print out the elements of an array. Another thing you might want to practice is creating a while loop that is just kind of a substitute for a for loop. So a while loop that does actually execute only a fixed number of times. Let's change this second one and take a look at that. So I'm going to create a variable here. Let's say val counter equals zero. 
and I want to keep looping as long as counter is less than four, let's say. And in the middle here, instead of read line, let's just do a print line and let's say counter colon and then I'm just going to insert the value of counter there. Now what's wrong with this? Well, what's wrong with it is that it has no way to finish. Counter is always going to be less than four. So we're going to do this. Then we're going to check the condition. It's going to be true. So that means we're going to do it again and we'll check it and it's going to be still true and so on. It will keep going forever. So what we want to do is we want to do something within the do while loop that changes counter so that eventually this condition can be false. And one thing we can do here is just to say counter plus plus. But to do that, this has got to be something we can change. So let's make this a var instead of a val. And what plus plus does is it increases counter by one every time it runs. And this is an operator that's also found in many other programming languages like Java and C++, for example. So if I now run this, we're going to see counter starting at zero and we're going to see counter equal to one, two and three. And then when it hits four, the loop's going to stop. Let's stop the first loop by typing stop. And then we see counter zero, counter one, two, three. And then we get this finish two coming out at the bottom. So that's it for this video. Do check out my courses on caveofprogramming.com. And until next time, happy coding.